I'm going to predict $100 silver is going to be a piece of cake. And I think there's potential that it could get to 250 or maybe even 500. I'm going to buy a lot more silver and I'm going to recommend to buy a lot more silver. And the crash is always proportional to how far the bubble goes. Now, if we tack on another 100% from here in the next four months or four to six months, let's say, then yeah, the NASDAQ could drop 80%. Uh, if the bubble was to top right here, which I don't really see the signs of excess just yet, I also don't see the economy rolling over into recession yet. You've got to, you got to have the um, fundamentals got to be in place for a recession too in order to have a bear market. Um, and I don't, I don't see that yet either. So uh, at this point, you know, we might get be lucky to get a 40 or 50 percent crash. But if, but if we tack on another 100 percent, then yeah, 80 percent is definitely in the in the cards. So it, it looks to me like metals are are in the declining phase of their eight-year cycle. And we're, we're, you know, if you look at a really long-term chart, uh, 10, 15 years, uh, gold is, is forming what, what appears to be a really massive cup and handle consolidation. Um, the cup was about 10 years, I guess. So you got to think the handle's probably going to be more than a year. Uh, so I, I think we have a little bit further to go uh, in this handle consolidation before we're really ready to, to take off to the upside. We haven't made any higher highs in gold yet. Now, if gold can get above uh, 1923 or uh, 1919, I think was the, the price. That was the top of that last intermediate rally. If gold can get above that, then I might have to change my mind and, and say that and maybe we are going to get a higher high before these uh, before gold drops down into its eight-year cycle low. But as of right now, I'm assuming that the handle part of this uh, cup and handle is is going to be a move down into an eight-year cycle low. And um, we, we still have to make a little bit lower low than that. Uh, I think it was maybe 1670 or something like that was the, the, the most recent low earlier in the year. That, that we got to make, you know, one more lower low. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big... Um, move below that. It can be a marginal move below that, but I'm at this point anyway. Until unless I see a higher intermediate high, I'm assuming that's what what's going to happen. We're going to come up short of that 1919 here during this rally, and then uh, we'll go back down. And at, at some point, probably next year, maybe in the spring, more likely in my opinion, because of some different cycle analysis, maybe in the in the fall. Uh, and then that, that I think is where we kick it off. And the, the size of that cup and handle pattern, um, I, I, I'm on board with the to the moon prediction that uh, most of the gold analysts are, are, you know, they're always to the moon. That's the way all gold analysts are. But I'm, I'm on board with that. But I, I think we have to finish that eight year cycle low and finish that handle first. And then once that's done, then the breakout from that cup and handle should send gold seven to ten thousand i think and i think silver even more i think before we continue help us clicking that youtube like button and subscribe now to our channel this shows the algorithm that you valued this information and it helps us spread that message sharing is caring and now let's continue i i've been saying uh, years ago uh, four or five years ago i said ten thousand is going to be a piece of cake in the nasdaq Nobody believed me at the time. I also said that 20,000 is not out of the question. It looks like we're probably going to hit 20,000, maybe more. Um, I'm going to predict um, $100 silver is going to be a piece of cake. And I think there's potential that it could get to 250 or maybe even 500. A lot of that will come in that last two or three months of the bubble. Um, silver is a much smaller market than stocks or anything like that. So it doesn't take much retail buying you know the fear of missing out buying to to send silver just it, it can go up a hundred percent in two weeks uh, you look at the bubble in in the 1950s and it was insane how quick that went up so when, when i when i say that it, silver could go to 500 dollars, you know, it, it sounds unbelievable right now but it could literally could literally take five to seven years to get to a hundred dollars and then it could literally go from 100 to 500 in a matter of six to eight weeks that's just how a bubble in silver could be. Um, central banks have just kept interest rates too low, too long. They printed too much money. Uh, it's creating, um, I'm pretty sure it's creating a bubble in the stock market. When that bubble pops, what are they going to do? They're going to do the same thing they always do. They're going to print more money. 
uh, they did the same thing in uh, 2008 when the housing bubble uh, popped. They started printing money, they cut rates, trying to um, resurrect the housing bubble and, and stop the uh, bear market in stocks. And what did it do? It, it all went into the commodity markets and, and caused uh, oil to go to $150 a barrel, which you know spiked inflation, which uh, in reality is what crashed the economy. It, it, it uh, collapsed the middle class. So I think they'll do the same thing. Uh, when the stock market bubble pops, I think they'll just start printing money again. I think it's probably going to leak more and more into the commodity markets and we're already in an inflationary phase and so i think it you know just we're going to have a long inflationary phase in commodities and then when you get to the end everybody jumps in at the end and uh, so i think that's what's going to drive the bubble and, and gold and silver is just a bad policy by central banks it will ultimately have really bad consequences you're going to get um tighter spreads if you just go with uh, silver bars uh, the 10 ounce and the 100 ounce bars, 100 ounce, probably a little better than the 10 ounce. The coins have a huge premium on them. And I don't know that they're, maybe you'll cover that premium at the uh, top of a bubble phase, but um, I think you're probably better off just to buy the 10 or 100 ounce bars. Just the spreads are gonna be a lot tighter. So it's been kind of stuck in this sideways grind between 30 and oh, maybe 21. I'm not sure without looking at a chart what that bottom uh, was. B between uh, 30 and $21. Maybe we get another um, marginal break back below that that low at 21 or whatever it was. Kind of how this uh, latest intermediate cycle bottomed, and that's this is kind of typ typical. Uh, big money uh, hedge funds, the banks, they'll they'll create these uh, breakdowns, triggers everybody stops, and then they can uh, they can buy what everybody else is selling and, and get in at the uh, exact bottom. So. I don't, I don't know that silver would need to go to $15. I guess it could uh, during an eight year, you know, a real panic during an eight year cycle low. But I think more realistically is maybe we get a move down to 20 or 21. And that's, that's probably about as low as silver is going to go. So, I mean, if it does get down to that level, I'm going to buy a lot more silver and I'm going to recommend to buy a lot more silver. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany, as you can hear, and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, 
here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.